Okay, picture this. You're about to get up on stage to sing a song, or maybe you're about to log in on Zoom to give a, an important presentation, or you're going to teach a class, or you're going to pitch a client, and your voice is feeling a little croaky, so maybe you didn't sleep very well, or um, you're just feeling a little bit tired, and you want some vocal exercises to help wake your voice up a little bit so that you can deliver your best performance, whether it's in the form of a song or you, a presentation of some kind. So in this quick video, I'm going to give you five vocal exercises that you can do even without a piano. And this is even for people who have never had singing lessons before and you just want something that you can work on that will at least point you in the right direction. It's important to know what the goal is of doing vocal exercises. So some students will say that they've done some warm-ups, but then they kind of did it haphazardly. Maybe they made some sounds with their voices and they did some random vocal exercises, but it really wasn't intentional or and there really wasn't a clear end goal for the exercises that they did. So it is important to know what it is that what are you looking for? What are you trying to achieve when you are doing vocal exercises? So I'm going to give you a couple of tips to help guide you here. First off, we want easy access to all areas of our range. You do want to have some exercise that will guide you through your entire range from a comfortable low to a comfortable high. Now if you are singing then you will want to extend a little bit more than um, if you were using these exercises just to speak. Now if you are using the exercises for speaking purposes it doesn't mean that you don't, ex you don't explore your entire range you should definitely be exploring your entire range, even the areas of your voice that you don't plan to use in your presentation. The reason why is if you imagine like a dancer, part of her warm-up routine might be stretches and maybe she'll do the splits. Just because she does the splits on during her warm-up, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's gonna do the splits in her show. Maybe her dance routine doesn't involve the splits at all. But the important point is that she wants to have that full range of motion available to her so that she feels flexible before she gets up on stage. This is just an, an analogy. In singing, it's very much the same way. We definitely want to take our voices a little bit higher, maybe a little lower, um, over the areas of the, of the range that you plan to use in your performance, whether that's for speaking or for singing. The second thing is we will also want that access to be connected, that feeling of connection. So as you're moving through your range, you definitely don't want to hear any kind of breaks or sudden changes in vocal tone. You want to be slowly moving through your entire range in a way that feels like it's one continuous sound it's a connected tone. Now the third thing that you're looking for is a feeling of release, especially when it comes to the way you are breathing. Oftentimes if we are breathing in a way that's very tense or anxious, then the way we use our voices will be affected as well. So if you notice that your voice gets stuck easily when you sing or when you speak, then I would recommend that you watch how you're breathing in. So one quick tool is to deliberately disengage the area of your throat here. So deliberately expand as you are inhaling when you are doing these vocal exercises. That will really quickly help you to check in with yourself, uh, start to become aware of any tension that you might not even realize you have. So real quickly is breathing in, but deliberately opening up uh, and dilating the throat area here. Now lastly, this one is specifically for speakers. If you're using vocal exercises as a way to prepare your voice for speaking or presenting, then as part of your warm-up routine, you definitely want to tap into where your optimum speaking pitches are. So optimum speaking pitches is the area in your voice where it's most comfortable for you to speak at. Now, there is a caveat to this. Many people actually don't speak at their optimum speaking pitch. So every voice has a certain pitch where it's the most comfortable for that speaker to speak at. But if we are not aware of where this is in our range, then usually we are maybe overshooting it a little bit. Maybe we're speaking at pitches that are too high for us or the reverse is most common, we're speaking at pitches that are too low for us. 
that can cause a lot of tiredness and potentially vocal damage down the line as well. So before I share the exercises with you, let's do a quick recap of what it is you're looking for when you're doing your warm-ups. So first off, you're looking for easy access to all areas of your range. So you want to go from the comfortable low to the comfortable high in your range and you want to be exploring that entire spectrum of sounds. You want to be looking for a sense of connectedness. You want to feel that as you're vocalizing from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom that there's no breaks or sudden changes in vocal tone. You're also looking for a feeling of release. So use this time to check in with yourself to see if you're holding any tension subconsciously in your body, for example, in your throat, in your upper chest, abdominal area, in your shoulders. And finally, for speakers specifically, you want to be using this time to start playing around and locating where you're going to be speaking at. So now I'm going to share five exercises with you that you can do very quickly, even without a piano. The first one is a slow, mindful lip trill that goes up and down your range. So if you've seen some of my videos before, I've showed you how to do this, but real quick is just lift your fingers up here, pout your lips, and blow some air out, but you don't need a whole lot of air. So try to keep that air stream as minimal as possible. Right, so you're expanding lower abdominally here, you're breathing in here into your lower abdominal area. Try not to lift your shoulders up, keep your shoulders nice and low and relaxed. So go wherever is comfortably low for you. You don't have to depress your voice to really reach the bottom of the barrel. Just wherever is comfortable for you. And slowly move your way up, paying attention to the way your air is moving out of you, paying attention to your body. This is a great way to just start centering yourself so that you're mentally and physically in a better state for when you do need to use your voice publicly. Try to keep that airstream as consistent and steady as possible if you stop halfway through or you want to take a breath that's totally okay too. Okay exercise number two is just a nice easy sigh but using an ah vowel and you can sigh up or down. So we can start from a high note and coming down anywhere in your range as long as it's high-ish. Ah. Again, the same thing with the lip trills. You're, you're thinking about easy and mindful and just gentle and take it slow. Now when you've done that a few times from top to bottom, you can go the opposite way. You can start from the low notes, anywhere that's comfortable in your, in your range and move up slowly. Oh, and you can come back down as well. But again, you want to really keep that mouth open and that back space expanded as much as possible as if you have, um, as if you were about to yawn. Third exercise I want to share with you is something I call the curious O's. And this is a great one if you have troubles uh, moving into your upper register. So what is a curious O? Is uh, pretend that somebody is telling you something very interesting and you and then you, your response would be, oh, how curious. <laughs> or it could be, oh, that's interesting. How interesting. Oh, hi. Oh. So that's, that's what I call the curious O's. That's a really great way to speak into your upper register as well. But again, the main goal is to do it in a way that is not aggressive. Again, gentle and take your time with it. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Hello, hi. You can use different words as well, of course. But again, that's a great way to start tuning in to the upper register of your voice. So this next exercise is a follow-up from the Curious O's and it's called the High Guys exercise. But in this particular way that we're using it, we're gonna use the word high to connect from that higher, higher register down. And when we say the word guys, we're gonna continue that line of sound but move from the low to back to the up, upper part of your range. So let me show you what it sounds like. Hi guys. So in a way, you're almost marking in your mind where that higher note is, that upper register. Hi, hi. And then you're taking that sound down, you're connecting it down. Hi. And then you're picking it up 
from that lower placement. Hi, guys! And you're going to try to find that same quality of sound all the way up back to the upper register. Hi, guys! And again, if you are finding this difficult, you may be using too much air or you're too loud. So dial back the volume. I'll have students that will say, yeah, but I want to project. I need to be loud and resonant. And I totally get that. However, if you are not balanced before you begin your presentation, then chances are you're not going to stay balanced during your presentation. So you're going to start to do things that will be uh, a little bit too aggressive on your voice and you might not even realize that that's happening. So it's not a very good habit when you're warming up to start projecting and to start putting all your energy in your warm ups. And then by the time you're on stage, your, 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 your voice is probably already going to be shot. So it kind of defeats the purpose. So I would say if your end goal is to learn to project, your warm ups should still be gentle to start. Let's put it this way. If you were warming up for a marathon, you wouldn't run a marathon as a way to warm up for it, right? You would save your energy for the marathon itself, but you would still do some exercises to get the blood flowing, to get your mind in the right place, but you wouldn't exert the same amount of energy in that warm up as you would when you're running your marathon. Now the final exercise here is what I call melodic counting. And again, it's a follow up from the previous high guys exercise. In the high guys exercise, we're just saying two words, hi guys, hi guys. And you can also play around with different pitches too. Hi guys, don't be afraid to get a little silly with it. Um, but melodic counting is similar, except we're just, we're literally counting. So we're using more words and different consonants and vowels combined um, in this exercises as well. So we're going one, 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 two, three, one, two, three, two, one. And you can be creative. There's no set rule as to how exactly to count. And if you're wondering, well, why are we counting at all? It's just because it's easier and it's more practical. So then you're not thinking about what to say. It's just quite formulaic in that way. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And you notice I'm not going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm actually deliberately being quite melodic. One, two, three, four, five. And the reason why is because, again, what are we looking for? We're looking for an easy access to our entire range. So that melodic pattern kind of covers that. We're also looking for a feeling of connectedness. So speaking through your entire range is one way to do that. And one, two, three, four, five is also takes that box. Um, and we're also looking for a way to start moving us from random sounds into words. So actual words that we would be using in our song or in our presentation. Now, when you've done all five exercises, the next step for singers would be to start singing a few lines of the song you're about to perform. Again, this is if you're in a scenario where you're about to perform in about 15 minutes and you've just been sitting in the backstage and you're starting to feel a little cold and you wanna just quickly warm up your voice, this is the perfect uh, set of exercises for you. And then you can start singing your song, whatever that may be, but still with that idea of um, using a little bit less effort so you're not going full out, but it's more as a way to start getting your mind um, in the right space for uh, in preparation for your performance. Now for speakers, the next step would be to uh, take that melodic counting exercise, but instead of using numbers, you would just put in some of the phrases or sentences that you you know you're going to say as part of your presentation. So there you have it, five simple, quick exercises that will help you to gently warm up your voice, whether you're about to sing a song or deliver a speech or give a presentation or coach your students. If you love this video, then you will love my brand new free mini training. It's a three part video series called The First Three Steps to Free Your Voice. In it, I take you step by step through three lessons that are designed to help you to learn how to free your voice so that you can use it more expressively and more confidently and more creatively as well. So if you want free access to that, visit onlinevocalacademy.net forward slash three steps. I'm Crystal Diaz and I'll see you again next time.